people have learned to earn out of conflict. In people in Kashmir, people save money because they don't know if tomorrow is going to be secure, if tomorrow they are going to get the same livelihood or they are not going to get the same livelihood. Same is the case with OGWs. We have seen sanctity in the society where conflict economy is taken, you know, is, is taken as something which is very natural, is taken as something which is Urdu mein bolunga to haq hai hamara kuch bhi karna. Corruption. We saw Gilani trading 2016, uh, you know, protest for the people for his own grandson's job. Now that is conflict economy. And that has an impact on people like you and people like me and ordinary citizen sitting here who has a degree, who wants to study, who wants to take a straight path to his career and he wants to move forward. But unfortunately, the favoritism, the separatism, the conflict economy doesn't let him survive. So what options is he left with? He's not left with many, many options. And that is what we are seeing in the society. There is no silent majority. In Kashmir, there is a very small, silent minority. And among that minority is a micro minority who I think is here today and who actually has the guts to come out and speak about these things. The silent majority here doesn't speak. The silent majority sanctions violence and is, has excuses to give fuel to the violence. So silent majority in Kashmir doesn't exist. We need to create a majority which actually can stand up and say, you know, call spade a spade and say what is wrong is wrong. And the problem with that is Kashmir is suffering from a typical syndrome called a single story syndrome from 1947. And that syndrome is of political victimhood. And unless and until that syndrome is not taken care of, we are not going to see any perception management or any change happening on the ground related to our future that has to change the story has to change and the story will change when we all will speak up with our own stories